Hey nail babes, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be attempting to do poly gel for the first time on my non-dominant hand. So we're gonna see how that works out for us. These are the colors I'm gonna be using today. So I just swatched them on a little piece of paper. And now I'm gonna go right ahead and prep my nails. I don't plan on keeping these nails on. So I'm gonna do the pop off method with some cuticle oil, rubbing in real good. And then we're gonna start adding some top coat. So I'm gonna apply two layers of top coat to these nails. This is what they look like once I'm finished. And now I'm gonna apply my tips. These tips I found on Sheen and look at that shape, like what? So look, right, I ordered a Kalinske brush for poly gel and I was so excited to use it, but it came broken. So I, and I didn't feel like returning it. So I just went ahead and fixed it with some good old Gorilla Glue. So I'm gonna go right ahead and go in with my first color. And I'm just gonna start blending this out. I'm starting off by pushing the poly gel up into the cuticle area and then I start bringing everything down. So I'm just using a pad in motion to get it to cover the entire nail. Now, once I got the poly gel halfway down the nail, I switched to my larger Kalinsky brush because I just felt like it just made it so much easier. These nails are long and I didn't have, I didn't want to sit there and try to pat all the acrylic smooth with that tiny little brush. So I'm just going to repeat the process, but on this nail, it's going to be an ombre. I just want to share my experience about this poly gel. And so far, I've really been loving this poly gel. Like, well, poly gel in general, because I only ordered this kit. But just me trying it for the first time, I can say that this was the easiest thing like for me to catch on to and be able to do on myself. Y'all know I'm a acrylic girly, but this poly gel thing has been the easiest. Like, it's nice. I really like working with it. I love the colors. I love how it don't move when I until I move it. Like, I can honestly say that this set right here that I'm doing with my non-dominant hand was the best. This set was the best my right hand has ever looked. Because I have more control over what I'm doing while using poly gel versus acrylics. Like, I've never been able to get this many designs in my right hand. Like, ever. I gave poly gel a rating of 9 out of 10 in my last video. But I'm going to go ahead and upgrade that to a 10 out of 10. Because once you get the hang of it, it's easy. Easy breezy. I'm not going to talk through this entire video. Well, I am going to talk because we about to read some Reddit stories. Yup. So I'm done talking about nails. Let's get into the stories, honey. Nail tech horror story. I work as a nail tech and I own my own salon. I live in a small town where I am the only nail salon around for as far as the eye can see. Since I'm the only nail salon, I used to stay open as late as 10 p.m. Anyways, what I'm about to tell you is about to be one of those long nights. It was a Friday night, a quite busy Friday night, I might add. The clock read 9 p.m., and I had just about finished cleaning for the night. Most of the lights in the building were turned off. With the exception of my back desk light, and I must have forgotten to turn off the open sign because... I suddenly heard the front door open. In walked in a tall, lanky woman. She wore a big black hoodie. Her sweater was so big, she seemed to sink in it and almost disappear in it. I was just about to close up. What can I help you with on this late night? I said as I began to reopen my station. I'd like a full set, acrylic please, and thank you, said the hooded woman. She had a thick southern accent that reminded me of my family back home. I sat her down and began cutting her nails. Her nails were long and dirty. Ooh. This woman's nails have been through a lot, <laughs> I thought to myself. She sat quietly at my station, not saying a single word. It was quite awkward, so I decided I would try and just focus on my craft. 
Short and square is how I would have liked them, said the hooded woman. You got it, ma'am, I replied. The more I looked at her skinny, pale hands, the more disgusted I became. Ooh, child. I was trying not to get creeped out when my nose got the whiff of something absolutely foul. I had to get up and open the front door to let some air in. Excuse the smell, my dog must have went to the bathroom in here somewhere. But honestly, it smelled more like what I could best describe as the smell of death. I turned back around to my desk and the woman was gone. Oh, oh no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I searched my small salon and she was nowhere to be found. When I realized she disappeared, I got the deepest shiver go up and down my spine. I immediately closed my shop and left and didn't even bother to put away the supplies I brought out. My new closing time is 5 p.m. Girl, what? What was that, a poltergeist? Like, what? A demon just came in your shop. A demon just came in your shop, girl. Oh, like, my God. Yeah, it would be no more lights, no more na- uh, late nights for me either. Child. The lady then disappeared. Let me know in the comment section what y'all would have done in this situation. Because I'd have ran. I wouldn't have walked. I would have ran right on up out of there. After smelling that smelly smell, I wouldn't even been looking for the Called lady. the police and closed shop. Shop would no longer be open. I would be relocated. Right on up out of there. Like, I really just wonder, like, if she had never went in got up to go open the door i just wonder how long that interaction would have taken place like oh my gosh horror story number two a few years ago i was walking through the woods off a beaten track a bit and i smelt this really overpowering sweet smell being nosy i pulled back the undergrowth to have a look and found a dead body the guy had clearly been there a while and wasn't looking great all swollen and green and black with various runny bits. The local wildlife had also been dining well for a few days. Ew, they was eating his body. (sighs) I called the police who told me to wait with the body until they arrived. Being in the middle of nowhere where it took a while for them to arrive and it got dark and I was just sat there in the dark sorry y'all people be typing funny let me let me start over i called the police who told me to wait with the body until they arrived being in the middle of nowhere where it took a while for them to arrive and it got dark and i just sat there in the dark with him for a long time it turned out he had committed suicide for a long time afterwards i had dreams about him And he would talk to me. Mm -mm. And not nice things. Oh, no. Mainly about how he was angry that I had disturbed his resting place. And he wanted me to kill myself. Oh, wow. Probably just my imagination, but all pretty disturbing at the time. He still turns up in my dreams from time to time. And no doubt will be tonight after typing i would have left him there yep i would have left him right there i wouldn't have been waiting with no dead body the police couldn't have paid me to wait there with him in the dark or in the light let me know if y'all thinking what i'm thinking i'm not sure if this was this girl's uh uh or guy's imagination but um yeah i don't know like you 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 did uh disturb his little resting place i'm uh, a pray for you i i don't know let me know what y'all think y'all think that 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 it's just her imagination, or you think this man is really pissed for her? <laughs> I bet she'll be the last time. They bother somebody that's dead laying on the side of the road. Couldn't be me. Next story. Ooh, this one is a two-sentence horror story. Growing up with cats and dogs, I got used to the sounds of scratching at my door while I slept. Now that I live alone, it's much more unsettling. That was creepy. That, that was creepy. I like that one. Jonay says, so I was sleeping and in the middle of a dream, a character of my dream who was doing something turned her head, looked at me very seriously and said, there's someone in your apartment. Wake up. I nearly had a goddamn heart attack and my apartment was empty. 
somebody gonna comment and say it was you you were in your apartment all along i'm dead okay that was really scary i would have been creeped out myself i would have been too scared to even look around through my apartment was it just me or was everybody scared of their apartment when they first got it because i was real creeped out by this little place like i when i first moved in here with my boyfriend like when when he wasn't home i'd be tripping like i would be tripping it took me a while to get used to the little noises and sounds but most likely it was the sounds of other people that live in the apartment too, like upstairs and stuff like that. But yeah, I, it, it took me some getting used to. It was always fine and there was never nobody here. So eventually I just got used to the little sounds. It's only like the freezer sounds and the air conditioning coming on and off and stuff like that. So whatever. I'm scary. Subscribe. Nope. Pope says, when I was a young child, I had the same dream every night for years about drowning when a huge wave swept over me and I sank to the bottom. Years later, I had a temp job delivering mail one summer during college. I saw this old lady sitting on a front porch waiting for me. When I got up there, she looked at me and said in a foreign accent, you drowned when Oceana sank beneath the waves. It freaked me out. I don't know about y'all, but I believe in past lives. I've heard of way too many past life type stories that involve children and it usually pretty much always involves children like they always seem to remember who they were before they died and when they come back and usually it's like a puzzle that they got to put together so they'll like remember certain key events or something that might have happened from their past life and then it takes them a while like a long time to realize what actually happened like a lot of them end up doing a bunch of research and then they'll actually find like if they remembered their names they they could search those names or like tragic events that have happened in the past and they're usually able to find a person that matches their story so it's pretty weird but i do believe in them maybe that lady was a messenger to like put her mind at ease or something i don't know what you think so I wasn't going to show this part of the video because I have a stiletto shaping video on my channel. But I say, you know what, I might as well go ahead because um, stiletto is one of those shapes that's usually the hardest for people to get. Um, like get, you know, like kind of even. Basically, um, in another video that I did, I showed this bit, this bit is um i forgot what it's called but i will link it down below i saw zule using a bit like this if you're familiar with her channel you should be if you like nails by the way but i saw her using that it's called a disc that's what it is it's called a disc and that helps me get my stilettos perfect okay all you do is go up and down each side of the nail until it's like nice and pointy. And that way I didn't have to use the hand file at all. I started off trying to use the hand file on my thumb, but I'll change my mind and switch right to my disc, girl, because it works wonders. Now back to the stories. Okay, I typed in creepy stories this time. Years and years ago, I was very depressed. I was living alone in a tiny apartment. I had taken a shower, put on a robe, a short silk robe for dressing, not a bathrobe, and lay down on my living room couch facing the wall, immediately fell asleep. Woke up hours later and the pest maintenance notice was on the floor right inside the front door. He had come in and sprayed while I was laying there on the couch with my naked ass out. <laughs> Freaked me right the fuck out. I went to the office and had a breakdown. They called the pest control place. Tech claimed he never noticed me. Bush, I was a 600, it was a 600 square foot apartment. He definitely noticed a half naked woman sleep on the couch. I get that it's a job, there's a job to be done, but he could have gone right back out the door and knocked harder or notified the office. Creeps are going to creep, I guess. Yo, why does this remind me of something that happened to me too? I was in my apartment and I put in an order for maintenance because my air conditioner wasn't working like for some reason no matter how many times they came to try to change my air conditioner um thing it just was not working and then this particular time when they came to replace the air conditioner the 
the whole unit that they attached to the wall was just dangling, dangling off the wall. They didn't even care to secure it, girl. So I had put in that order and I was in my room, sleep, like sleep, sleep, passed out. And our apartment had this thing where you can request or you can put in the system that either they do have interest entrance um permission or they don't have interest permission and they have to like wait till you come open the door. I obviously put in that they have to wait till I come open the door for them because I be home alone pretty much most of the time. I'm home alone. So, um, this particular day, I woke up from my nap and I came, I went outside my room and noticed that the air conditioner had been replaced. And I was freaked out myself because just the thought, like, even though I was in my room, like, just the thought of a person being in my house without my knowledge was wild to me like it just freaked me all the way out because that's just it's just an unsettling feeling so I know how you feel girl and I'm sorry that happened to you and he definitely saw you (laughs) I'm gonna try to squeeze in one more story one more story because the video is almost over so give me just a second let me look for one we had a computer room quote unquote in our house that was at the end of the hallway. So I went down the hallway to use the bathroom and I could see the glow from the computer screen dimly lighting up the room. Then it looked like someone walked in front of it and cast a shadow on the wall. I jumped and then started laughing. Geez, you scared me. I looked in and there's no one in the room. I booked it out of there and avoided that bathroom for weeks. And then there's another person underneath this story that said, Reading your story freaked me out because something similar happened to me. We used to have a computer room. One time I went in there and saw the computer was turned on. I also realized there was a shadow on the wall. It seemed like the person who was casting the shadow was standing just behind me. I thought my brother was behind me trying to prank me, so I turned around, but there was no one there. When I turned back around, the shadow paused for a second and then sprinted away and disappeared. So the conclusion is, computer rooms are clearly haunted. These two stories stood out to me a little bit because I have my own creepy, scary, freaking experience. And I'm going to tell you guys about that experience. But I'm going to have to tell you in the next video that I post because it's going to be a little bit lengthy. And this this video is running out of time. But a little short synopsis is I used to live with my sister a couple of years ago. And we nicknamed this, whatever this was, we called him Creepy Shadow Man. We, we, (laughs) okay, so I'm going to tell y'all the story about Mr. Creepy Shadow Man. Now I'm telling y'all, this was the most weirdest, craziest thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. And I'm not sure if I told this story on this channel before, but if I have, if you've heard it, um then you already know what's up and and just just don't say nothing for the the new people who probably haven't heard the story but this is a 100 percent true story so hit that like button comment down below if you want to hear the story of mr creepy shadow man and i'm gonna catch you on the next one bye